I've seen so many videos of people speedrunning Duolingo in different languages, but I haven't really seen one in Spanish, at least not a recent one. So in this video, my plan is to speedrun Duolingo in Spanish as a Spanish native speaker. Just for a little bit of context and background, I, even though I wasn't born in Mexico, I spent the first 15 years of my life in Mexico. So a kindergarten, elementary, and then most of middle school I spent in Mexico. So really my Spanish education stopped in middle school, but I speak Spanish at home. I speak Spanish with like 90% of my friends. I speak Spanish with my girlfriend. So I speak Spanish pretty much all the time except when I'm at work. So yeah, let's let's get started. Duolingo. Okay. As you can see I have an account in Japanese, but let's add a new course. Okay, Spanish. 34.5 million learners and I'm gonna be one of them. <laughs> Spanish about the course, spoken in 21 countries. Spanish is one of the most important languages in the Western Hemisphere and the third most spoken language in the world. Learning Spanish for the first time. I already know. I, I think I, I already know some Spanish. Start the test. Hello, nice to meet you. Hola, mucho. This pronunciation sounds extremely robotic. This is... Hola, mucho, gusto. I don't know if I should kind of really speed run or just little by little explaining the words and the, the vocabulary. I guess we can do a little bit of both. My apartment is big. Mi departamento es grande. Mi apartamento. Or apartamento. It's the same thing. Apartamento, departamento. Es grande. Three in a row. ¿Cómo está Puria? This is your favorite movie. Es tu película favorita. My son wants a pet. Hijo quiere una <laughs> mascot. This, is so, this sounds so funny. Mi hijo quiere una mascota. This is not natural at all. Pablo, ¿por qué estás aburrido? Yeah, this literally sounds like SpongeBob in Spanish. Eight in a row. Do you want to go to the park? Off. I totally didn't read that today. Or oi. Okay. They always eat in the kitchen. Ellos siempre. Siempre. Comen. Oh no, comen en la cocina. Who has many businesses? Quien. Quien tiene muchos. Negocio. Jugador is player, amigas, friends, female friends. Usar it is to use and jugadores, players. Queremos más sandwiches, por favor. She sounds so annoyed and hungry. We want more sandwiches, please. Do you drink tea? Ustedes beben té. Okay, so beben, yes, it means drink, but you can also say tomar. Ustedes toman té. It's the same thing. So, ustedes beben té. We don't have cell phones. We, nosotros, no tenemos celulares. Sopa de patatas. Potato soup. <laughs> she has two refrigerators in the kitchen. Why? Why would you have two refrigerators in the kitchen? Ella, Ella. tiene dos neveras. Another way to say nevera or refrigerator is refrigerador. Refrigerador is really common. Ella, ella tiene dos neveras en la cocina. Felipe y Renato son rubios. Felipe y Renato son rubios. So this means Felipe and Renato have blonde hair. Or in Mexico we say they're, ellos son güeros. Güeros means just blonde hair. Mis padres quieren visitar diferentes pueblos. You can say mis padres or you can say mis papás. It's the same. I am carrying the bags to the kitchen. Yo, Yo. llevo las bolsas. Ah, la cocina. I am carrying means yo cargo. Carrying means cargar. I'm carrying, I'm carrying the bags. Estoy cargando las, las bolsas. I'm carrying a backpack. Estoy cargando una, una, una mochila. I would say, yo cargo las bolsas en la cocina. If you want to translate it word for word. Oh, we're done. I think I only missed one. Yeah. You jumped ahead to unit 28. How many other units are there? Whoa, there's so many levels. From what I can remember, this, this is completely different. 
to when I first tried Duolingo a long time ago. Jump here. How do you say minds? Mentes. Pariente means relative and aterrizar means to land, like a, to land a plane. Aterrizar un avión. What is the tarifa del seguro de salud por mis? Oh, okay. I mean, I know what it means, but this is this is not an easy sentence. ¿Cuál es la tarifa del seguro de salud por mes? What is the price or the cost of health insurance insurance per month? I think the way I would say is, I think he was operated in a private clinic. But this is kind of weird. I think they operated him on a private clinic oh i think they operated on him oops mi papá ya blank escuchado el final del partido cuando lo llamé this is a sentence in the past tense haber doesn't make sense so mi papá ya había he has heard before ya había escuchado necesito inscribirme al seguro social para poder ir al doctor cuando tenga una emergencia resfriado. Okay, I need to sign up for social security so I can go to the doctor when, uh, when I have a cold. Regalo is gift. Enamorarme is to, fell, to fall in love. Anuncio is like, um, like a billboard, like a commercial. Divorciarme is to divorce. Desafortunadamente, unfortunately, mi papá tiene alergia al pelo de animal y por eso no tenemos mascotas. Ana se siente débil. Ana feels weak. So, I'm going to take it home. Así que, que, así que la voy a llevar, así que la voy a llevar a casa. I shouldn't crash my wife's car again. You, sh you should never crash anyone's car. I shouldn't crash. No debería. No debo. No debo or no debería. No debo chocar el, el auto or carro de mi esposa. Esposa. Otra vez. No dejes tu cartera en el auto si vas al cine. No. Okay, what, what was it again? Dejes tu cartera en el auto si vas al cine. Auto si vas al cine. I'm wondering if they're gonna check accents. They didn't. Okay, that's good. We have family coverage, although there are only two of us. Tenemos. For here, for this kind of sentences, you don't have to say nosotros tenemos. You can omit the nosotros and just say tenemos because it's already implied it's it's applying to us so tenemos cobertura familiar o para familia para familia family coverage would be cobertura familiar or cobertura para familia aunque aunque although solo so, somos somos dos Dios. i mean Technically, it means the exact same thing, but I guess the Duolingo version is Tenemos cobertura de familia. Gloria te está llevando las pastillas que necesitas. Gloria te está llevando las pastillas que necesitas. Gloria is taking you the pills you need. Está. This is proof, everyone. This is proof that even us native Spanish speakers mess up the accents all the time. Here's a funny story. In Mexico, I was taking Spanish class. I forgot what it was, but we were writing stuff. And the teacher asked us to make sure we didn't forget the accents, right? And for every single word that we misspelled with an accent, we would have to write it down a hundred times. And there were so many people writing down words a hundred times each. I think I just had one. Accents are important, especially in writing, but when speaking or when texting your friends, that's not gonna matter. Writing Spanish, do you think that if I stop thinking about illness, I will recover? Piensas, piensas que si paro de pensar. About would be sobre, acerca, or de pensar sobre enfermedad. Pensar en, de enfermedades. Pensar acerca de enfermedades. Me voy a recuperar. I think sobre, sobre enfermedades sounds better. ¿Crees que si dejo de pensar en enfermedades me curaré? This is literally the same meaning. But oh well, I guess. Ooh, ha have one more chance. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, I think we have it. We, we, we got this, okay? His car didn't have seat belts. Su carro no tenía cinturones. It's the same thing. I'll do this again real quick, all right? 
three hours later okay i had to do this a couple times just because there's so many different ways you can say and duolingo requires a very specific wording for the sentences so i had to do it a couple times but yeah finally i did it took me like three times just because of that reason i'm not saying my the way that i did it is wrong or the way that duolingo wants to translate is wrong both of them are correct so that's that's why it's kind of hard to get it the first time continue you unlocked unit 207 uh stay on track not now so now we have all this unlocked and i'll speed run through this unit let's go and we're getting there i mean this is this is taking way too long um when I finished the second test, it was to skip up to unit 207, which is the last one. But then I need, I still need to do this one by one. Each one of these circles has five lessons. And so it's pretty much the same material and I need to do it five times each. But yeah, I'm pretty much halfway there to this trophy. So hopefully I can finish it by today. That would be ideal. Once I get to this point, I'll record again my face and screen recording and everything, just so you can see my reaction. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, finally, after a lot of work and probably like three hours, three hours worth of work, we're finally here. We're finally at the last section, start. Hopefully this is just one and not five. Okay, let's see. They want you to know if the medical equipment is suitable. Quiere saber si el equipo médico es adecuado. And I noticed that you can also kind of put your pointer on top of the word and it'll show you the translation. ¿Has probado hacer yoga? Have you tried doing yoga? La gente se beneficia del ejercicio porque hace, hace bien. You were saying that you had found a mouse in the soup. Decías que habías encontrado, encontrado un ratón, ratón en la sopa. En la sopa. También te afeitas los fines de semana. También te afeitas los fines de semana. Another word for afeitar, which means shave, is rasurar. I think I think rasurar is more common. I mean, that's uh, at least that's the word I use instead of afeitar. I never say afeitar. I, I always say rasurar. Y amor, hay que pintar el cuarto y comprar la cuna. También hay que hablar con el doctor. El bebé llega en una semana y no estamos listos. Your friend had lied, so she couldn't go out with you. No. Amiga, Am había mentido. Mentido. Así que. Así que. No. No podía, podía salir contigo. Salir. 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 Contigo. Hacemos deporte a las cinco si nos quieres acompañar. Oh, now you have to speak. Wow. Hacemos deporte a las cinco si nos quieres acompañar. Ay. ¿Por qué siempre me maquillo? Maquillo. She's doing her makeup. Mal con este lápiz labial. Lápiz. En el siglo pasado, esta sinagoga sufrió varios atentados. ¿Sabías? Qué horror. No lo sabía. Personalmente prefiero ir a una fiesta en vez de lavar la ropa. Me too. Personally, I prefer going to a party instead of washing clothes. Veo que todavía te duele la muñeca. Muñeca. The wrist. Hablando de eso, fuiste el médico. Speaking of. Habló el ministro sobre el plan económico. Habló el ministro sobre, sobre el plan, plan económico. Economical. I noticed some of the sentences and the topics are kind of strange. No, that's not something you would say on a daily basis. Habló el ministro, the minister. I mean, that's really not daily speaking. Is it a useful word? Could be. It depends on what you want to say. Nos dicen que tendremos tiempo de sobra. Creo que son... Creo que nos dicen mentiras. Los bebés no van al baño solos. Por eso necesitan pañales. What does pañal mean? Diaper. Te había dicho que era una buena idea hacer, hacer picnic hoy. El día está soleado. soleado. Yeah, you can, you can see this, the sun. It's pretty sunny outside. Oh, we're done. Acabamos. And now we get the so time-consuming diamond trophy. Is that it? That's it? That's all we get? We don't get a certificate or something? Well, we finished all Duolingo in Spanish in about three hours, three or four hours. But yeah, now it's 
let's get to the conclusion. After spending the last three to four hours doing Duolingo in Spanish, I think it changed the way I thought about Duolingo because the first time I used it, it was a long time ago and it was quite different. But the thing is, you won't be, you won't get fluent just by using Duolingo. I've, I've never heard anyone saying, hey, I got, I got fluent in Spanish, I got fluent in Japanese, I got fluent in English just by using Duolingo every single day, two hours a day, you know. But if you combine Duolingo with different resources, with different things, for example, doing immersion, I think that's that's pretty useful because Duolingo, what it's going to be doing is it'll expose you to different words. And then through immersion, through watching Netflix, through watching the videos, that's how you acquire the word. That's how you move. That's how you move the meaning of the word from your short term memory to your long term memory. So I, I feel like using Duolingo on a daily basis, maybe five to ten minutes a day. It's useful. I mean, it's better than nothing, obviously. And yeah, I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing for Japanese. I'll probably start using Duolingo in Japanese a little bit more often just to kill time like five, ten minutes a day. But yeah, it was an interesting experience. It wasn't that fun at the end because it was a lot of repetition of the same words, same, um, same kind of sentences. I guess there's a good variety of exercises. I only had to speak once on all the lessons that I did. I only had to speak once, which I would want to do more speaking just to practice and practice the mouth movements. But I think I think Duolingo is going in the right direction on with the lessons and the setting and the interface of the website. I didn't really use the app, but I'm guessing it's the same thing. But yeah, I thought it was an interesting experience. And, it, and if you and if you want me to do the same thing for English, Duolingo in English as a Spanish speaker, uh, let me know or also in Japanese. Obviously, I won't be able to get everything in Japanese, but I think it would be fun to tr just to try it out, just to see where I'm at. And yeah, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.